Hello guys, it's 24th of January, 2021. We are waiting patiently for the big T, that's Atamia, to announce their featured releases for January of 2021. So let's go back straight away. We're going to wait for this page to go live at 4 p.m. Japan time on the 25th. Let's see if it's big news or otherwise. Okay, the time has arrived. It's time to press the button and look at the 2021 releases. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Right. Okay, right. First of all, Tammy, as we all know, radio control, mini four-wheel drive, education, all that crap. Okay, we don't do any of that. We're looking at static models. Let's press the static model button and see what there is. Ooh. Right, okay. I'm going to start from... Uh, bottom to top, really. Okay, here's the headliner. Oh, you Tammy fanboy is going to be wetting your little pants right now. It's a new phantom. Okay, but we're going to come back to that. Let's start right at the bottom. Let's just flip through. Blah 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 blah. blah. Right. Okay. Start at the bottom. Okay. This is not a new release. Let's talk. Let's talk about cars first of all. I think if you're a 124 um, scale car guy, I think uh, Tammy treats you kind of quite well. Yeah, you get some really nice stuff. As in their new McLaren Senna. Yeah, it's like freaking state-of-the-art kit. Let's have a look at what they're bringing out, right? First one is a classic. So it's an older model. Don't know how old. Of a 120, 124 scale, as usual. 1989 Sauber Mercedes C9. So, um, like, I'm, I don't know anything about these. I'm not even pretend. Something like Le Mans or something like that. I don't know. GT sort of series. Now, they brought this kit out before. I don't know if it was good, bad, or whatever, um, but it's not been in the catalog for a while. So what they've done is uh, basically, right, there's the car. Okay, it looks like you get two versions of it. Uh, you get, it says, well, it doesn't show you. It says, detailed rendering of the 5 liter v8 twin engine on the well why don't they show the engine they don't anyways doesn't matter what you get what is updated is you get this you get the decals uh looks like the seat belts tire decals and the masking stickers which are sort of essential for masking off the um the black surround of the glazing get a little video let's have a look at the video all right let's have a look at that music and the model the model looks like it's ready to come out okay i don't know anything about this it might be one that everybody's wait, waiting for for a long time oh we haven't had that salva mercedes in the catalog for such a long time i'm so glad to see it back or it might be like well you know it's irrelevant it looks really cool to me I, i'm pretty sure if i was a car guy and i was into this sort of stuff i'd be pretty flipping happy man why don't they show the engine Show the engine on the box. That's about it. Okay. So that's it, right? Okay. So a re-released but updated model, 124 scale. And here's their, their new, like, freaking state-of-the-art, brand new tooling. A 124 scale, as usual, Nissan Fairlady 240ZG or ZG. I think it's going to be freaking really... Obviously, it's aimed towards Japanese domestic market. You know, Nissan, classic Nissan. It looks really good. I think that's going to be so popular, that, yeah. Um, let's see what it says. Tammy is glad to announce the uh, all-new edition, Fair Lady 240 ZG. Dedicated model for the Japanese market. So this car was only available in Japan, you know, in the real... And so the model's clearly aimed at that. You get three variations, a Z, ZL, and ZG. Uh, a 1971 car, 2.4 liter engine. The image shows an actual car. So this is not the model. This is the actual car. So we don't know what the the model kit is, you know, still in the workings. And as we can see, here's some 3D renderings. Uh, realistically depicted, so it's going to be absolutely spot on, you know, researched, you know, whatever. They've got it down to probably go to the factory and, 
like get the blueprints, whatever. Uh, this is pretty cool. A realistic depiction of the engine and movable engine hood with hinge. So a lot of the uh, Tamiya car models are like curbsides. You, don't got any, you haven't got any engine. You've got an interior. You haven't got any engine, but this one's got the engine and a hood. Flip it open, seal the detail. I think that's freaking great. You know what I mean? Um, if you're a car guy and like, I, I did build cars, you know, I haven't done for a long time. I, I'd be really enthused with that. You got like a, you know, a brand new uh, state-of-the-art kit, fully detailed in interior engine. Um, I don't know if there's any competition, but um, I don't think Hasegawa or Fujimi have got one of them. But so, sounds really good. I'd, I'd be really happy. So, uh, you know, especially if I'm a Japanese car modeler, I'm going to be over the moon with that, I think. Uh, really classic. I think I think it'll do well. And, I, you know, it looks looks good. So, anyways, moving on, because it's like we're military model guys, basically. Right, okay, here's their, um, I'd say their bottom level entry. <laughs> right, it's the, um, one thing about uh, Tammy is they do a 148 scale range of armor, which um, not everybody else does. So, if that's, you know, I, I built a few of them. And I have to tell you, I just, it's just not my thing. They, they, they're underwhelming in terms of detail. Um, so they've got a T3485, which fills out the catalog of their 148 scale military miniatures. Um, yeah, okay. Um, to me, no big deal. Like, I can already see, like, how clunky the fenders are. The detail, look at the grab handles, they're clunky as well. Um, to me, like, it doesn't, like, float my boat. But, you know, it's probably quite easy to build. It'll be a little parts count, etc. You get a little figure in the hatch. To me, it's like, I'm not interested whatsoever. I'm just, it just does nothing for me. In terms of a 148 scale kit, yeah, great. They've got that in the armor series, but... I find these so underwhelming compared to the 35th scale stuff that you've got out now. Look at Rye Fields model. Look at Mini Art. Look at their T-34s. Massive detail. Interiors, all sorts. And then this is the, the lower end of the scale. But, you know, simple build. Maybe a good beginner kit. Here we go. Now, this is a Ketten Craft Rad mid-production. I don't know much about these Ketten Craft Rads mid-early, whatever. What I do know is that Tamiya had a Ketten Craft Rad in their catalogue, you know, like a really, like, early days they, they had one. So they've gone back and retooled and have got a new tooling of a kit that's in the catalogue. That is unusual for a manufacturer because, remember, this sort of kills their old kit and this, you know, and if their old kit is a classic and they sell it and it's the one they have, people would buy that. Like, but now they've got a new one that takes over. Um, what do I think? Okay, well, first of all, let's have a little look here. Okay, it's a Kefton Craft Rad, like not a really big tank, nothing that impressive. However, three figures um, depict marching. You know, I mean, the figures from Tamiya are getting better and better. They, you know, they're designed, they look like well posed. So it's like a little mini vignette you've got straight away with the, you know, the guys walking. We've also got this cute little trailer as well. That's kind of nice. Um, this sounds good. What does it say? It doesn't show you. It says engine hatch can be assembled, open or closed, and it uses photo etch parts for the grill. So that's kind of good. You know, they've got an extra level of detail in there. The kit includes a trailer with depiction of canvas cover, driver and infantry, three figures in total. So, yeah, okay, kind of nice. It's it's like it won't be that expensive. You know, maybe a nice little um, starter kit. Definitely makes a good diorama accessory, but nothing like big and impressive or, you know, like groundbreaking. But, you know, I think still quite a welcome model, you know, not, not that bad. There's a little video here. Let's, let's just click on the video and see what this is. Maybe it'll show off the details. Nope, shows the same photograph we've already seen. Another photo. And that's it. Okay, so the video's not really worth watching. There's no, like, showing off the features. But, you know, you get it. I think this would be quite good. And because you've actually got the model here, this is obviously due for imminent release. So, you know, it's going to be maybe in a month or so. You know, you're going to, you're going to get your new 
newly crafted uh, Captain Craft Rad. Uh, yeah, okay, fair enough, okay. Right, okay, moving up. And this is the last one. This is the last military miniatures. This is the only 135th scale kit. Um, and, well, sorry, second 135th scale kit. This is the Panzerkampfwagen 4 Alps G early production. The British called these the Mark IV Supers, the big gun, okay? And uh, we don't know what the actual kit looks like. What we've got is a 3D rendering of the model. Now, the 3D rendering shows, first of all, four figures. There's a raft of extra attachments, including jerry cans that have been, like, that's a field mod that the Africa Corps did to carry more water. They don't carry fuel on the side of the hole like that. Um, and then there's some sandbags. Uh, it's got the, yeah, the long gun with the early sort of muzzle brake as well. What does it say? In-depth research at the German Tank Museum in Munster contributed to this highly accurate kit. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? It's like, you know, researched, rendered, you know, they've got the dimensions right. That has to be a plus, you know. There's nothing wrong with getting good detail on the kit. A Panzer 4G, not a big groundbreaker there. Um, it just follows the succession. They did the earlier Panzer 4F, I think it was recently. So we've got another Panzer 4 um albeit an africa africa core version what does it else it say includes three figures with rolled up sleeves and one figure with standard clothes also choose between two types of decals uh north african and eastern front well that's interesting okay let's have a look at the figures the figures are in shirt sleeves and one of them is with the long sleeves so straight away this is um I tell you what, I, I bet there's a load of guys who do it as well. If you do the Eastern Front version, these this is the AfriCore Africa Core uniform. They're in shirt sleeves. You know, uh, it's during the you know warm winter, the warm weather that they're going to be wearing shirt sleeves. So this is like really you're going to do this vehicle depicting the Africa Core version. You do the Eastern Front, the figures aren't going to match um, that period, are they? They're going to be wrong. So. I don't even know. Why did they even do decals for the Eastern Front? Um, so you can have the one guy with the long sleeves? I don't know. Anyways. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. How do I see this? For me, nothing. Okay, basically. Nothing impressive. Said it before. Um, Run-of-the-mill stuff. What have we got at the moment? We've got Mini Art with their Panzer Fours. We've got Ryefield models with Panzer Fours. We've got the absolutely awesome... Border models, Panzer IV. Uh, I will put this ahead of the Dragon kit. The, the Dragon kits that are contemporary, not the old ones that had the Magic tracks. The Panzer IVs with the DS tracks are just, you know, terrible because you need to buy aftermarket tracks. Um, at least these have got Lincoln length tracks. I do like the way they have the figures, you know, posed within the tank. That's a really good plus, that. And, you know, that's that's good marketing on their behalf. What well, Somebody will be looking around and they'll be looking for a Panzer IV. Well, none of them got figures. That one does. You know, that's that's kind of good. So, but for me, yeah, I, I didn't expect anything uh, groundbreaking. Basically, um, Tammy, in terms of military models, are just totally outclassed by the, the manufacturers. Okay, or if you want to, like, dumb down, simplified stuff, Go to Tamiya, you know, if if you can't, you know, if you're just barely at the point of joining two plastic, two pieces of plastic together, okay, that might be it, might be it. But also this Africa core version, there's not many of them about. That's a bit of a sort of niche Panzer IV. I can, I can sort of see that. But for me, yeah, disappointed. We aren't going to see anything big, anything clever from Tamiya. If you want to see innovative kits, you're going to look elsewhere. Basically, that's the way it is. Okay, now let's go to top of the bill. There, like, this is their headline news. And actually, not a surprise. I think people were predicting a F4 Phantom was going to be imminent from our, you know, favoured um, model manufacturer, Tamiya. And here you go, a 148th McDonnell Douglas, McDonnell Douglas trademark 
F4B Phantom 2. That's kind of important, that actually, this trademark thing. It means it's a licensed product. It means that it's been, you know, fully, it's fully on board with the licensing and um, probably has some cooperation as well from, well, McDonnell Douglas, obviously, superseded by Boeing. So we expect to see a, uh, a licensing um, mark on the box. Let's just read, first of all, it says, famed aircraft in, in scale. F-4Bs were the first Phantom II aircraft to see active service. Powered by twin jet engines, they could carry ordnance used by Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps throughout the Vietnam War. Here is a triumphant entrance into the 148th aircraft series for the Phantom II with this model. Images show a prototype with panel lines accented. So is this the model? Uh, transparent canopy parts are partly painted. So this is the actual model, and they've done... So we're looking not at a 3D render, but it says there this is the actual model, and they've just painted over the canopy parts. So we're looking at the real deal here. Um, I wish they'd show us a bit more. It's a bit of a tease. I thought these were 3D renders at first, but this is the actual model built up. Um, you wouldn't guess, would you? Let's see what else. There's some pilot figures inside there. I think you can see as well. Let's let's talk about innovations. Um, why? What does this kit have to be? It has to be the best F4 Phantom out there. And let's say at the moment there's plenty to choose from. Okay, we've got Zukimura, we've got Academy that did F4B, and we could even go back to the Hasegawa's yeah kits. So this needs to be the best one. Yeah. And there's going to have to be some innovation there. And really, I think the thing that uh, time you try and sell, they try and sell like idiot proof kits. The F-14 that came out, very, very expensive. But, you know, people will pay that money to have um, an ease of construction, to have, you know, great detailing. So I expect this kit to be expensive. And it needs to be significantly better than what's out there. So it needs to be better than the Zukimura kit. Well, Zukimura kit's kind of expensive as well and also hard to find. And it needs to be significantly better than the Academy rendering. And the Academy rendering is a really good kit of the, the Phantom. For me, do I want this kit? Yes, I absolutely want this kit. Why do I want it? Well, because I haven't got a, a Phantom in my stash. It's just, that's just the way it is. I And a Phantom is an aircraft that I, uh, you know, I absolutely love them. So I might be thinking differently had it been, you know, had I had a Zukimura uh, F4 Phantom, C or J or whatever, and I'm thinking like, well, what's better about this one? This one needs to be considerably better than what's out there. Um, what is it saying? It says... Accurate depiction of the complex form is based on research of the actual aircraft. So this this model has been rivet counted. It's going to be absolutely accurate to whatever research they carried out. So hopefully they carried out the right research on, you know, AF4B. Uh, what we don't know is we don't know what, ver you know, we don't know what variations there are. What markings are we going to get? No idea at all. We've just got this plastic uh, build-up um, accenting the panel line detail. We can see some ordnance fit out, the early sidewinders. They, from this rendering, they look a bit clunky to me. That's just, I'm going to say it right now. They look a bit clunky, the fins. Maybe we can't tell at this stage. Other, other details that we know about is the outer wings can be assembled, assembled folded or extended, and right and left <laughs> right and left tailplane move in concert. So they've got like a, a rod between the, I think it's called a stabilator. I think that's what they call that. Yeah, that tailplane unit. Um, okay, that moves. So, geez, I, I mean, it's not, th this sort of gets to me a little bit because we still play this like it's a toy. Is it a scale model? Oh, look, I can move my little wings. It's a scale model. Like, I, I'm not interested in that feature whatsoever. However, the wing fold, as long as it's well detailed, yes, I want that. Also, I want the canopies to be offered in an open position so it can show off the cockpit detail. Um, do we get two types of canopy? Do we get a closed and open? Don't know. It says, ah, it says, sorry. Choose between open and closed canopy 
an expanded or stored refueling probe and boarding ladder. So that's good. You got the yeah the the, the boarding steps come out. The air, air refueling probe comes out. It says that you can, well, I mean, uh, we don't know what the mechanism is, but somehow or other, we can display the canopy up or down, you know, be it in flight, and we've got the, you know, we've got the air crew in there, or open, uh, you know, on, on in that setting. Um, what else can we see? We can see some detail within the canopies themselves. That looks kind of good. I can see some detail here as well of the, you know, the rear of the... Um, is it navigator or weapons officer? He's got some detail on his console there. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, this looks really good. The splitter here for the air intake looks um, exceptionally well detailed. We don't know what the parts composition is. And crucially, we do not know how much this kit is going to cost. I expect it to be, you know, particularly expensive. I, I, I'm going to say straight off the bat, it's going to be about an $80 kit. It's going to be... Um, expensive it's going to be really expensive for for that kit probably more expensive than zukimura and at least you know three times the price of the academy one is it going to be three times better well that's entirely up to you how you feel i think they have they they sell the um they sell the illusion that like any idiot can build it and believe me i like check out the forums there's so many people who, are, who cannot build these and think that they can and they because they just you know they haven't got the basics there but uh besides that i expect that to be like a really like well designed kit i don't like to use that term well engineered a well designed kit easy to put together what i expect in this as well um academy did the fuselage there's two ways to do the fuselage obviously traditional two halves joined together or you can have the entire upper fuselage as one composite that joins onto the uh onto the wings and looking at the rendering i think we have the latter i think we've got this all in one piece also i think there's some detail down here that's going to sort of make stuff join up where panel lines naturally are helps us with the clean up um so it should, you know, it should be a great model to build. Um, don't know what other innovations are there. Need to wait. We need to wait and see what what comes out. What does the boxing look like? What versions there are? Um, are there any um, variants forecast? Okay. Now let's also talk about disappointments. I mean, let's let's be categorical about this. What is missing? Well, missing entirely is. 32 scale aircraft the 32 scale aircraft has not grown since the mosquito i think and the last one was another rendering of the p51 that series just does not seem to expand um 48 scale jets seem to be the latest thing from uh, tamia um 72 scale as well totally ignored there's there's no there's no releases eminent in 72 scale so this is it one aircraft 148 scale brand new tooled f4b um also why an f4b well okay let's, let's talk about some let's talk about how i see it how some other modelers would see it disappointment that we haven't got an f4e late f4g uh the um the late wing version phantoms we haven't got them we've got the early f4b why have we got an f4b well to me it's categorically obvious we already know what the zukimura f4b is we already know what the academy f4b is so tamiya already knows its competition and knows what it has to better if it brought out a brand new tool f4e you know late and an f4g there's only Hasegawa out there that do those kits in 48 scale. So the other guys, you know, the competition can try and better that or, you know, attempt to. So this has to be the best F4B out there. It has to be pricey. What do you guys think? Are you pleased about this? I think actually there's another point as well here where I think for prop guys are going to be, you know, I think they'll be pretty damn disappointed to be honest. I was expecting to see a P-38L Lightning. I, I was expecting to see a tooling of that. I was expecting to see another World War II prop aircraft, a P-40, maybe a P-39. A Hurricane would be very welcome. 
uh, you know, a new tool one, but I think we've got armor hobbies to look forward to. But this is it. This is it. If you're a Phantom fan, you're going to be happy. If you've already invested heavily in a stash of Zuki Muras and uh, Academies, you might be thinking, damn, you know. Uh, for me, yeah, I, I probably want this, but I'm, I'm going to wait. We need to sort of find out some more details. Uh, be also interesting to know about the tooling. Is there anything that suggests that we're going to see the later variants and C, a J, and particularly welcome uh, F4E late, F4G? Another another factor as well here. I'm a little bit surprised about. We haven't seen uh, at the moment. This is the last year of the F4E uh, EJ Japanese Air Self Defense Force F4 Phantom is retired and is the EJ Kai as well, the uh, modded version. So it's the end of them. When, when, the, when that was announced, Fine Mills brought 72 scale out, new render kit, and um, SWS has got their uh, F, F4E J, Japan, F4E J. So I'm sort of surprised Tammy didn't jump on that, but instead we've got like, we're going to see, basically we're going to see US Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps. So hopefully get all those variants in this boxing, but that remains to be seen. It's fully licensed. Expect that amount of expensive, however popular. So that rounds everything off for the early 2021 releases from Tamiya. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me what you were happy with, what you're disappointed with. For me, yes, I'm happy to see the Phantom. I'm not going. I'm not not going to lie, especially because I haven't got one. I will be buying that. In terms of military miniatures, I am not surprised, and I'm equally disappointed. I just we we're not seeing anything breakthrough from uh, Tammy in terms of military miniatures. From aircraft, we see evolutions. We see we're going to see something in here that's like some really good design, some good some good work, something that makes it like nearly idiot proof and building if you're a 24 scale car guy as well i think you're going to be happy you see some nice kits coming out you know really nice renderings research detailed military miniatures we're just not catered for anymore because tammy are outclassed by the manufacturers that's just the way it is i'm going to say it and you guys can share your thoughts and give me your thumbs downs i don't really mind but uh, that was my review of the 2021 early releases from tammy and this is the bear and i am out of here